and gentlemen, salam and kwadahan misayachum, a warm welcome everybody here in the Grote Zaal of Splendor, and also a warm welcome to our viewers of the live stream, and a very special warm welcome to the Tigrayan viewers, whether it is in the diaspora or in Tigray itself. Now, we just listen to the uh, Tigrayan national anthem played by uh, a wonderful selection of Splendor musicians. But we also have three guests in our midst and um, on flute and vocals, Jacob Yemane, on piano and car, Samir Abraham, and from the Adelis band, Samira Veldai. I'm not sure where, where Ah, yes, there you are. <laughs> um, it was in January this year that I stood here on this same spot and hosted an evening to raise awareness um, for the war in Tigray and the atrocities committed to the people of Tigray. And um, in these eight months that we have passed now, a lot has happened. There is a peace treaty signed, and yes, a lot of the hostilities to the Tigrayan people have stopped. And yes, daily life is starting up again in Tigray. But one thing hasn't changed, and that is the silence <coughs> from our national press and international press. And the need to uh, uh, speak about this war is ever as urgent as it was on that evening in January. But it's not the reason why we are gathered here tonight. Because tonight, we want to give a message of hope. And the two things that are always intertwined with hope are youth and education. And that's what we're going to talk about. Now, you saw already some pictures of schools in Tigray. And, um, as we all can see, these schools are destroyed and not functioning as schools. The schools that are still uh, uh, with four walls and a rooftop are most of the time now um, functioning as shelter for refugees. Um, in order to restore the educational system in Tigray again, we need your help in the form of donation. And now you all here in Splendor, you have already contributed a, a donation. But to our viewers, um, I would like to uh, ask you if you can make a donation to help the educational system functioning again and to help the children of Tigray uh, to, so that they are able to go to school again. Um, now we're going to listen to another song from Tigray and it is called Netela Mai Mai um, from Matea and as I've been told Netela means the white cloth 
that is so often used in so many occasions by the Tigrians. And my is the word for water. Natela, my money.
Let's say that my mind. Now I would like to invite to the stage Gebre Christos Gebre Meskel, who is going to say a few words about the current state and of the uh, land and of the educational system. Gebre Christos. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Janina. Um, first, welcome all of you. Uh, uh, Janina has said it well, but I would, I would like to repeat that. Um, so it's, it's a little bit hard to go out of music and talk about a very terrible state, but I think it has to be told. So let me just give you a bit of context about what we are um, talking at the moment and why we are here. Because I think without context, we, we might be lost a little bit. So uh, there was a, a two-year devastating war in Tigray. And then uh, I think in uh, November 2022, uh, a peace agreement uh, was signed uh, between the Tigrayan forces and the uh, Ethiopian government and its allies. Um, that was supposed to bring uh, a lot of change. Uh, one change has happened, and that is that active uh, warfare has stopped. But a lot of things remain, and Tigray and the people of Tigray remain in an extremely difficult situation. One negative thing about that peace agreement is that it took away the small attention that was paid to Tigray. Now, the suffering and the devastation is never heard. So it has created its own problems. When I talk about Tigray, um, I'm talking at the moment uh, about almost 50% of Tigray under Tigray, under Tigrayan uh, control. The rest is divided among the Ethiopian forces and its allies. And that the people of Tigray still remain in siege, completely surrounded 360 degree, with uh, uh, only, almost only uh, plane flights from Addis Ababa. That means everyone is controlled. Whatever goes to Tigray is controlled checked by the Ethiopian government. So this basically puts the people of Tigray at the mercy of uh, the Ethiopian uh, rulers and their allies. And this allows them to continue the uh, extremely genocidal war that they have been waging upon the people of Tigray. Just recently, uh, we heard news that about just, uh, I think it was uh, within the past uh, months, I heard news that about 100, uh, about 1,400 people died of starvation. And this is because there is nothing getting in into the region. And to add uh, to the uh, extremely difficult situation, the, it, the uh, wounded food program and the uh, USAID, who were the biggest donors, have suspended um, aid to Tigray citing that uh, a lot of theft has happened and they want to investigate that. And in the middle of this, the people of Tigray are being punished. They are dying uh, in camps in, in that uh, region, in the small part of Tigray that is completely blockaded 360 degree. So it's a, an extremely terrible situation there. Uh, and nature has also unleashed its own uh, <coughs> ugly things, so there's, uh, there's a disease, there is a, a locust invasion, there is, uh, there is uh, there's even hailstorm for the little crops that the people are uh, uh, growing. So it's like, <laughs> it feels like once you are in problem, there's more problems, more problems come. And so this is the context within which uh, we, are, uh, we are in, in Tigray. And a positive thing is that uh, following the peace agreement, the Tigray uh, 
interim administration, as a, an administration that has been established following the agreement, has said that uh, it is resuming schools, uh, but like I said, there is no infrastructure, everything is destroyed. Uh, as you saw here, uh, some of the pictures at the beginning, uh, there are no schools, there are no school supplies. On top of that, there is really now an extreme, it's a season of grief, I, I could say. And this is because of the uh, total uh, devastation, total massacres that have been happened. Rumor, I mean, some of the data, some of the uh, uh, data that we have is that between 600,000 to 1 million people have been killed. It's a huge number. And now there is, uh, uh, there is information the Tigray in interim administration is telling people uh, about who has been killed in the, in the resistance. So the entire Tigray is now in a time of in a complete grief. Uh, just like today, um, when we were preparing for this, I got news that uh, my cousin, uh, who was in the, uh, in the army, this, this one, just, just now, um, heard that he has, the, the family has been informed that he has been killed. So really, um, the, the, the region is like a scene of grief now uh, from both massacres, but also from the toll, the huge toll uh, in the resistance. So in this context, uh, education is res uh, resumed, but without anything. And the education sector has lost teachers, students, uh, um, and uh, materials that were needed for schools. Blackboards, for example, where you can write. Everything is either looted or is destroyed. Um, but um, here, I think what we are trying to do is that we might bring, we might rekindle some hope in the education sector in Tigray. Uh, and that is either by donating, but also by really bringing hope to the Tigrayan children that they have to start to believe in school again because now they have lost. They haven't been to school for the past four uh, years, first corona and then the, the war. And now uh, the problems are all accumulated. They are like uh, out of eight children in school, uh, there are children that haven't been uh, that haven't that haven't gone to school. All these prob problems together have created a huge problem in Tigray, and the region has absolutely no resources. Like I said, no attention means no resources as well. Um, so we are here to draw attention to this extremely uh, difficult, forgotten world, uh, because if we speak. We hope that you know, others will speak as well. And together we can make noise and we can also contribute a little bit. Whatever contribution we make here today helps. That's what I got from uh, speaking to people. Whatever, a small support that you think, a small support, buying a pen, buying a pencil, might look like extremely trivial, but here it brings hope. It brings uh, uh, um, uh, the feeling of being uh, not forgotten. And so I think that is what uh, we want today in this program. Uh, I hope that uh, we can do this. I hope that the, the children of Tigray can hear us and can again believe in the value of education and go to school. Uh, finally, uh, let me just switch a language here because I also want to speak to them directly. ጸገንኩም ይረደናዩ ለማንቲ አብዚ ታክምና ዘለና ለአሃትኩም ለመህጋዝ ይሞ አብ ትግራይ ዘለኩም ተማሃሮ ተመልስኩም ትምርትክ ተማሃሩ አብ ትምርትክ ተአምኑ ወላ ጸልማት ይምሰልንበር ከሐለፍ መሆኑ ተረዲኩ ገስኩም ናብ ትምርትክ ትገሩ በዚ አጋጣሚ ክላቦኩም ደሊ ክልምነኩም ደሊ አይዘኹም ተስፋ ይትቅረጹ ታንክ ዩ ሶ ማች video from the head of Tigray Bureau of Education, Dr. Kiros, 
but not before we have listened to Shishani uh, singing and playing one of her songs um, called Shades of Orange. A big hand for Shishani. hard topic. So I wanted to share a song that I haven't written but I've arranged um, because I feel that as a country, as the Netherlands, having the silence is something that, um, that we're responsible for. Obviously we are trying to make noise and whoever is trying to make noise is making noise but on a national level we haven't done this. So I decided to, um, to sing my version of the Dutch national anthem that I gave a new name, Shades of Orange. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kiros Gush, and currently I'm working as the head of Tigray Education Bureau. And this is a pleasure to me to convey a message regarding the situation in Tigray education system after the devastating war waged on Tigray. And before describing the situation, I have to use this opportunity uh, to, 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 to acknowledge and appreciate uh, John William Budget and the entire splendor team who have been 
uh, working hard, supporting hard. So Tigray people, and I remember the back in February this, this, this event that you organized. And uh, I have also to appreciate and acknowledge Gabriel Christos and his entire team of uh, Tugahat for organizing such 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 event and inviting me to convey a message so that uh, together we can put some hope in the hearts and the minds of Tigray children. When we back to the situation in Tigray education system, as you well may know, Tigray was progressing well in achieving a sustainable development goal, especially sustainable development goal number four, and we were able to uh, decrease the walking distance to get a primary school to 2.5 kilometer, and the walking distance to get the secondary school was about 7.06 uh, kilometers. And uh, well, we were well, uh, doing good in creating access and equity, in general, in 2020, due to the war on Tigray, 2,490 schools either partially or completely are destroyed, and their school infrastructure, equipment, teaching aid materials, all looted, burned, and destroyed. So the school's physical infrastructure get collapsed. A second most important thing that get collapsed because of the war on Tigray is a human resource. In 2020, we had about 46,000 teachers who were teaching for more than 1.46 million students. But unfortunately, due to the war, more than 14,000 teachers are unaccounted. We have many teachers who get killed by the bullet of the invading forces. We have many teachers who get tortured, who get wounded, who get displaced, who get migrated, and who change their occupation to support their life because there was no salary for, two, for more than two years. So because of all this, now 14,000 teachers, the whereabouts of the 14,000 teachers are not uh, known. And more than that, the existing teachers get, get traumatized and uh, uh, because there was no salary for more than two years and uh, they, 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 they are deprived of economically also. And the third most important aspect of the education system is the curriculum. And Tigray children, the schools were closed for more than three years. That's about seven uh, semesters. And uh, because, of, because of this school closure and the destruction, the more than 2.4 million students are out of the school. And imagine, according to UNESCO, in 2023, globally there were more than 244 million children out of a school and from Tigray 2.4. You can imagine that the population of Tigray is less than 0.07% compared to the global population, but we are contributing more than 1% to the global uh, out of school children, which is 13 times more than our fair share population in population um, wise. Because of this uh, war on Tigray, now we have many challenges to reopen the schools. The school infrastructure and supply, as I mentioned, is get looted and destroyed. And we set our targets in this uh, education recovery and reconstruction program. And uh, our priorities, we are categorized in six categories. The first category is we need support in fast rehabilitation maintenance, reconstruction, and construction of schools is our first program. And teachers' healing and development program is part of this uh, recovery and reconstruction program. The leadership, school leadership, healing and the development program, the curriculum development program, the technology assistance, the school feeding, these are um, the areas where we seek, we seek, we need uh, your, your support. Once again, I would like to appreciate and acknowledge the splendid team and uh, the entire team of uh, Tugahat for organizing such event and I wish you a productive and successful event. I thank you so much. And now I would, look, would like to invite the musicians back to the stage again. And we will listen to a song by Eyasu Bere, Tigray Adina, which means ons land, Tigray, our country, Tigray. Give them a warm applause. <laughs>
Can I have all dancers on the stage, please? I think the dancers are still outside. Sanai, have you brought your dancers with you? <laughs> Sanai will bring in all the dancers, I hope. I think I'll do it. <laughs> I hope they are coming.
Sorry, girls, girls, can you stay for a moment? No, they're not listening to me, oh boy. Can you stay for a moment? And Sanai, can I, can you come forward for a moment? Thank you very much, ladies, for this beautiful dance. And Sanai, can you introduce all the dancers to us and tell us a little bit about what we have just seen? Okay, first of all, I would like to say good evening, everybody. Uh, as we all know, this is one of uh, the culture which are here in Tigray. This is called Ashenda. Uh, as you can see, the grass is also called Ashenda. And also, this is this Ashenda festival was started in the fourth century during the Axum civilization, which is like explaining or girls start to explore their women's right at that age. This is one of the things that I showed. There was earlier stage of women's right in Aksum Kingdom. The women also try to express their feelings. They don't have their own time. They don't have a time for unity. And they also express everything, their feelings in the Ashenda. So every year, Ashenda was celebrated in Chigurai. It's a huge or big, one of the big culture. Most of the time is here in August for well, it starts on the August and mostly it takes like weeks. So every woman is, and young girls started to celebrate this agenda starting from August. They explain everything in their culture. So this also the, the dressing style, the, the jewelries, they are all unique. Most of the time the girls or the girls from Chigurai wear this all. Things to express their culture since the first, the, the first century. So this is all about Ashenda, what I can say in this short period of time. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Okay, let, uh, they are starting to explain what they are. I would like to introduce them all. Okay. Okay, so beautiful, the cultural, cultural dressing also. So yeah, everyone there tried to introduce themselves to the audience. My name is Samhal. My name is Danait. My name is Marhawit. My name is Tahap. My name is Kasanet. Uh, hello everyone and good evening. Welcome to this uh, event. I'm Froini. I'm Mizer and thank you for yeah for being here. Thank you so much. Please give it up for those beautiful girls. Thank you so much again. And I would like to invite Geber Christos again to the stage for some testimonies. You're gonna hear not only a testimony of your family, Gebre Christus, but also some other testimonies. Yeah, we have... Uh, well, the mic is, uh, is yours now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you again. Uh, it was nice. Uh, I don't think I want to add to that, but I, I feel like I'm the guy who takes you out into a little bit um, the sad part of the, uh, the, the story. This is... Uh, this beautiful thing took me back home where I, where, when I was uh, growing up as a child. Um, it is it's a season of celebration, in some cases two weeks, in some cases a week. Uh, but across the Grai, uh, when the land uh, is covered with flowers, the girls uh, dress in their best, come out, express uh, themselves, express uh, the beauty around them. It is such a season, and now it is, uh, it is a little bit in Tigray, uh, beginning the kind of the dry season, but just like end of uh, August, beginning of September is when 
this uh, is celebrated. But I think there is something about it that, um, that you know, we are celebrating here now, but during the war, the girls of Tigray, the, the, this, is, this is an event that the girls of Tigray wait for a year, preparing. But for the past uh, three years, they weren't able to come out because you can't gather, you can't uh, be found together, otherwise you are a target for the uh, uh, drones. So it is good that they brought it here, but it's also good, I think, to remember the story that this was not possible. Uh, but this year they started celebrating. With that, I want to take you a little bit into the education. So I want to tell today, what has the war done to the Tigran students? So I don't think I need to go far to find a story. I can just start with our family and tell you just a little bit about what it has done to us. Um, I wasn't able to talk to my family for a long time, uh, but recently there was there's a little bit of opening uh, in Tigray. So I was able to talk with uh, the children of my uh, siblings who are in the city, in the capital, Magala. Uh, these are some of them. I come from a very big family, so uh, these, are, these are some of the children. Uh, that I got access to. I talked to all of them, uh, and it was just hard to hear how they feel about the interruption of school. They simply said, we miss our teachers. You know, this is something they would never say before. But now they just miss the school. They just miss uh, being just at school is something they, uh, they miss. Uh, one of them, uh, the... Uh, the, uh, the third one from, uh, from here, uh, wrote, uh, uh, she, wrote, she read a poem for me about going to school. It's such a longing for school that the, Tigray, the children of Tigray have been denied for the past uh, almost four years. The seven semester says the head of education. But these are for the children. Uh, I have also just brothers uh, one of my brothers was studying, uh, he had actually like a job here. They have a, what they call professional doctorate. So here at Eindhoven, first he finished his uh, master's in Milan, and then he got a job here. Um, uh, but in between, he decided to go to Tigray uh, for a month. And that is when the war started and he was trapped there. For three years, he, he stopped, I mean, he uh, stayed there, trapped unable to move out of the grave because it was not possible to move. So they canceled his program here and uh, eventually now he has managed to come to Europe through another program. But that is one story. Uh, another young brother of me, uh, I, I don't include their images here for security reasons because they will be associated with me and I don't want to put them in trouble. But uh, my younger, uh, another younger brother, who was a, a lecturer at the university in Magala, uh, was forced to join the resistance. Uh, another brother of mine, uh, who was finishing his college, also joined the resistance. So all these have stopped education. I mean, they have been interrupted and this was forced upon them. And this is just in one family. But I should say, we are actually lucky because we are from the part of Tigray that is not the most heat, the hard heat. It is relatively better because in the other parts of Tigray, to be found alive by itself is a big thing. Many families have per perished. But this is just the story uh, of our family. I myself have been affected. I consider it really not a big deal, but I'm also finishing my PhD, but I have put it on hold to, uh, uh, to speak for, to write, to speak for uh, Tigray, because I felt that there was no one speaking about this war. So I just, it's simply, um, 
There is no one, you know, that has been affected by this war, whether they are in Europe, if they are Tigray, whether they are uh, in, in Tigray or outside Tigray. We are all affected in different degrees. But the ones that are hard hit are, of course, the students, the children of Tigray that for almost four years of their life has been taken away from them. But uh, that's about me. Uh, now I would like to bring... Uh, uh, some other testimonies who are here with us today. One of them was now dancing uh, with us, Froini. Uh, Froini, would you like to come here? And I would also like to invite Asbaha, who is another uh, uh, testimony here. Asbaha, can you come here? Do you, do you, do you hear? Do you hear me? Yeah. So, um, these two uh, Tigrayans will also tell us how they have been affected by the war, how, they, how their life, how their education has been affected. Uh, luckily, uh, they, were, uh, they have managed to come here, so they are lucky, by definition, I think, by being here. But they will tell us their story. So, Froini, uh, can you tell us your story? about? Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for this event, especially Cabra Cursos, to prepare this one. And also, the, uh, the, our guests, you are already here to share and to feel our pain. Uh, so I'm Froini. Uh, I just came here for a study. Uh, but from start, um, my story, I was born in Maizabri, western part of Tigray, and I grew up in Makala. Uh, and I graduated with applied biology. And I start uh, working in Makala University as assistant lecturer and by chance I get a scholarship, uh, OKP, and I came here uh, to study my master's. Uh, but the, for me at that time it was like two feelings, happiness as well as sadness. Happiness is just like to follow my dream came here, and the saddest part is the war starts that day, which means after I arrive in Holland. So I don't feel anything about Holland. I only feel the pain, the stress, and the struggle. Uh, so after I arrived, uh, I think first November, and the war started after two days. So for me, it was really uh, painful, hard, and uh, stressful. I can't focus on my study. Uh, it was so hard because uh, no connection, nothing to meet with uh, my families. Uh, it's really, really hard. Uh, and in this part, like everybody, uh, they can meet their friends, their families, but me, I can't. Almost like more than uh, one year. Whatever it is, I don't have any choice. I should finish my study because there is no choice. So I'm just trying to, to manage it. So in this part, I want to thank my roommates during that day uh, be, being with me as well as uh, like, I, it's called like my family for me. They is already here. Uh, Mr. Sami, he's like my family for me. He always calls me, gives me support. Don't worry, just like. <laughs> Sorry, I just be a little bit emotional. Uh, like I said before, I just struggle to finish my study uh, because there is no way rather than to do this one. But at this part, there is other, another Tigrayan student. They feel like me, but they don't have any support. They struggle mental health. They, st they already stopped their study. But me, I just tried to finish. Uh, but I graduated my study. Uh, after that, there is no hope, no way to go back to your country. So for me, it's like two, thing, feel, uh, two feeling, either happy or sad. I already finished my study. What's the next step? I don't have any country. I don't have home to go back again, which means I am homeless. I'm orphan. That is why we struggle to create a student with all ability, with this all capability, we don't have anything to do. So what is our next step? That is giving us more and more stressful. So war is not good for us. War we know only in history books, in movies. But when it came reality, it is so hard. So I want to say here, this is not only my story. This is part of all Tigrayan students' story. So I want to say, uh, yeah, it is so hard. At least we try to survive it. So if you get some chance as well, 
we have the ability, we have the capability to show, to support uh, our community. So I want to say this thing. So thank you so much for giving me this chance. Thank you for, and thank you for sharing that. Um, I think uh, Froini also, for me, represents uh, the strengths. She has managed to finish her study um, despite the extremely difficult situation, em emotional difficulty she has gone through. She was here, uh, and I think the fact that you have finished it is a very positive story, and I <coughs> kind of feel like that's a message of today because it is very difficult, but we want to tell the Tigrayan students that it is, it is, yeah, we, they, we should try. We should again believe in education. We should go to school. That is what we want to say. And uh, I want to thank you uh, for sharing this. But stay with us. And we also want to hear from Asbaha. Asbaha, what is your story? Tell us. How does this uh, uh, work? Uh, how has it affected your uh, life in connection to education? Tell us. Uh, yeah. OK. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot for organizing this. So my name is Atbaha, uh, just as I told you before, I was a humanitarian uh, practitioner and human rights advocate in, uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, so when I come to the, like my personal testimony on the education system in Ethiopia, uh, as soon as the, the just war broke in Ethiopia, uh, like just the allies were destroying the schools just purposively all over the region. But besides that, there was a system, systemic, uh, just a removal of Tigrayans from the education system. Uh, and just my testimony was, just I was trying to join the, my PhD degree in one of uh, the universities in Addis Ababa. Uh, just we call it a UNISA University, which is a South African University, but well, like it's original in Addis Ababa and just Ethiopians run the university. Then I decided to join my PhD degree. Then I went to the university. Just originally I apply online, then just go for further clarification to the university. Then just at the gate of the university, just I was asked to share, to give my ID card. Then I gave them my ID card. Then further he read my ID card, his Tigray ID card, like just we don't have just ethnic visit ID card. Then he read my name and his Tigray name. Then he asked me, are you guys still with us? Just it was a torn conflict during that time and media's government officials, specifically the higher officials were just disseminating and neglecting the guns from, from, the entire, from the entire country. Then later, just I keep quiet because it needs one quote to be arrested at that time. If you are Tigrayan, like if you call, uh, there is one suspect here, I will be arrested. Then I keep quiet and beg him to pass to the university. Then later, just he was not happy, but just unfortunately he allowed me to go to the university. Then just I talked to the secretary to talk to the registrar, registrar officer. Then she allowed me to enter. <coughs> then just I try to uh, introduce myself because just I have my objective to uh, just assess the university status and the PhD status in the university. Then 
Uh, just I told him my name is Asbaha. Uh, just I came uh, to check my PhD status because I was registered. Uh, and he asked me, are you from Tigray? Yes, I am from Tigray. Aha, so what do you want? Yes, I came to uh, check my PhD status because I was registered. Uh, do you think you will, you will join the education system in the country? Uh, then I asked why, why you say like that? I was again confused, but just behind I know. Uh, I all know the situation behind that the officials, uh, like basically the government officials were doing uh, in the system. Then finally, just he refused to talk to me, uh, uh, and he said, is, is luxurious to you at this moment? And what do you mean? Just I said it's luxurious, so you can come uh, just another time. Then later, just I learned uh, they, they, they were just officially excluding us, uh, and I finally uh, just went out from, uh, from the university. Just later one month, uh, just I got arrested by, uh, by police because it was uh, just taking to the concentration camps to like 70, 80,000 uh, people in, in Addisa were arrested, and I was among them. Then finally, uh, just I was arrested for about uh, just one month, and just everything becomes uh, uh, just disastrous in the, in the country. Just basically, the schools, uh, like the system, in the education system, like the grants were excluded, totally excluded, and just I gave up uh, myself. Uh, just in fact, he was saying it's luxury, and just I learned, you are, he, he was right, it was luxury for me, because my peoples were killed uh, just all over the country, uh, specifically in the Tigray region. Just besides that, I have four sisters, four sisters in Tigray. Like, see, they stopped the education since 2020 during the breakout of the COVID-19. Till now, they are out of school because their school is distracted, totally distracted. And so many families just were killed as well. Uh, now, just the school is like the interim government tried to open but there is no way, there is no classroom, there is no uh, uh, teacher, as the doctor says before. Uh, there is no access for education as well. So they start to learn under the tree. They start to learn uh, just using stones instead of blackboards. So like the entire system in the country was just excluding Tigrans, basically uh, like the rural students in, in, in the region. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your uh, testimony. Uh, you are strong. You've made it uh, despite the challenges here. Uh, I think the good thing is that we are safe here, um, but in Tigray, this, even this safety is not there every day. Um, your life is in danger, and um, we want to, and uh, we want to appreciate the, the things we have here, but we also want to encourage the uh, children of Tigray to continue to struggle, to continue to believe, to continue to have hope, not to lose hope. That is what we are trying to do, but today we want to thank both our uh, uh, eyewitnesses or uh, uh, testimony tellers, um, and we want you to stay strong and you are, but again, I want to say that, and thank you so much for today. Um, you, can, you can go, you can go, but there's one more, uh, maybe one thing I want to add. Uh, there's a lot of testimonies. There was one, um, one person that was supposed to come here, uh, but he was a little bit, <laughs> it was it was impossible. He didn't make it, but he sent me his his message to read out. So maybe I should just read that quickly for you, uh, because I think it has a lot of um, uh, things that captures the situation. In June uh, two twenty twenty one, no, June two twenty twenty one is forever etched in my memory. That was the day I received an email 
my acceptance into one of the Netherlands' most prestigious universities with a fully funded scholarship. The joy this brought to my family and me was unparalleled. Yet at that moment, I was in Magala, hundreds of miles away from the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, where I needed to finalize my visa. Since the Tigray Defense Forces, this is the resistance forces, had regained control over most parts of Tigray, the journey to Addis Ababa had become perilous. War-torn roads and active conflict made traveling a gamble with life. However, I chose to brave this treacherous route, driven by a desire at a, higher, uh, at a brighter future. A journey that would normally make, take six hours took me an entire day, alternating between car rides and treks. Reaching Samara in Afar was a sigh of relief, and the subsequent trip to Addis Ababa a fulfillment of the first part of my dream. However, the city brought with it its own set of challenges. Mass arrests and ethnic profiling forced me into confinement and a family home. My only ventures outdoors was uh, my uh, trip to the embassy. The airport's immigration was another uh, problem with the grants barred from international travel. Yet I took the leap, endured the interrogation and finally touched uh, Dutch soil in summer 2021. However, the nightmare back home pursued me. One dark day, I learned of my uncle's tragic death, murdered because of his Tigrayan identity. My heart sh was shattered. He wasn't just family, he was a mentor, an academic luminary, and an embodiment of the value of education. And as if that, was dev as if that wasn't devastating enough, Another blow struck when I found out my entire family's arrest. My younger sister, just four years old, was left to fend for herself. The agony was unbearable. With every lecture I attended, images of my distraught family overshadowed my focus. Education at that point seemed trivial. The straw that, broke, that almost broke my resolve was the news of my father's passing. Grief, anger, confusion, despair, despair. I was engulfed by a tempest of emotions. I felt isolated, bereft of the chance to bid him a final goodbye. On the brink of surrendering my dreams, I took a hiatus. Conversation with my family, despite our distance, ignited a spark in me. They reminded me of the legacy my father and uncle left behind and their unwavering uh, belief in the power of education. Slowly, my studies transformed from a, more obligation, a mere obligation to a sanctuary, shielding me from the horrors that haunted my, past, haunted my past. With unwavering determination, I graduated. While my academic journey was overshadowed by tragedy, it was almost eliminated by resilience and hope. Now, as I look forward to a promising career, uh, now I look forward to a promising career. I dream of returning to Tigray in the future. Equipped with the knowledge and experience from the Netherlands, I aspire to be a beacon of uh, change for community. That was his uh, message that he was supposed to speak here, but uh, he wasn't able, so he has sent me. It is a positive thing. I find a positive story in this, in that despite the challenges, he managed to continue to finish. And that's also what we heard from Crowley, who was also dancing in this positive thing. So. Uh, in the ash that was left by war, we can rebuild uh, lives, we can bring uh, hope, we can bring resilience to the, the grandchildren. And I like to convey that message from this, the, these testimonies. It took a bit longer, but thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much all for your brave stories. Um, it is now time to listen to some music, but not before I stretch out the importance of good education. 
Good education is the basis of every healthy society. And let's give these children in Tigray the chance to follow good education. So um, I will place just in a minute the QR code of our, yes, for that camera, please. Yes. Um, donate, just donate and give children in Tigray a chance of good education. Thank you very much. And now music, the song Asli, arranged by Splendor's own Tatiana Rosa.
ገዛና ማለት ጸግምና Nebiat Burk says that she used to learn in grade 5 before the war broke out. She has frustrated as she and her families are in hunger and she is out of school. She added that she wishes to serve her country. We have nothing to eat at home. There was a bank service before the war broke out. My father used to work hard and feed us. But now we are in a great problem. If I got the chance to study and complete my education, I want to be a doctor and work for my country. Nebia speaks she either to attend her schooling before the war started, but at this very moment, she has become tied up in search of her daily nourishment in war. We have never thought to join in such work and remain out of school, but I decided to work here as my families are facing severe problems. The children express that lots of children are displaced from their residences and many have lost their parents due to the two years war in Tigray. They also added that they are exposed to different problems as they are forced to carry out challenging works to sustain their lives. We feel sorry that education was suspended for about three years. For example, after I take my breakfast in the morning, I stay here the whole day looking to get lunch. I use it to focus on my study before the war broke out, but now I help my parents by engaging on a daily labor works. I used it to learn in grade 7. I dropped out of school due to the deadliest war in Tigray. I don't know why education is not started yet after the peace accord. I've never thought to engage in a work like this, but the problem forced me to work here as a shoeshine. Due to the coronavirus and the war that subsequently broke out, education in Tigray has been discontinued for more than three years. The fate of millions of Tigrayan children now remains moving on streets, begging their daily bread and engaging in exploratory works. And now for some more music from Haile Gebru in Simame, and it means let us get together. Laat ons samenkomen. Who Toepasselijk voor vanavond. I chose this number, this song, to like. It uh, goes with the situation in Tigray. I, I was born in Tigray, but I'm uh, from actually from Eritrea. But I born, I I lived seven day, seven years of my best, the best years in my life in Tigray. Then the Eritrean Ethiopian war broke up. Then we left to our uh, home Eritrea. Since so then, I, I become like refugee all over. My la my country in Eritrea, we move from place to place. We don't have place to stay, and now I'm okay. So let's say uh, it's in uh, uh, the number called Nisamama. Let's make an agreement, as he said. Thank you, sir.
Now, for a final inspirational story, I would like to invite Gabriel Christos once more to the stage to talk about the Calamino School. So, as we look for ways to revive, rekindle the hope into the education system in Tigray, we are looking into the past. Are there inspiring stories? Are there stories that we can tap into? That is what we are trying to do. And as part of that, recently, I, uh, at Tigat, the media I, I run, I manage, we asked, uh, we, uh, we asked students in Tigray, uh, not students from now, but uh, former students of Tigray that are now across the globe to look back and tell us what inspired them, what was inspiring. And they tell us some stories and I want to uh, tell you a little bit about that. And with that, I want to say that even if uh, Tigray is today an ash, I believe there is hope. There is something that we can get out of that ash. Um, I want to take you back a little bit. In 1984, some of you might have heard about the Great Ethiopian Famine. Um, it is sad, but that famine was also mainly about Tigray, although it's, it's, told about, uh, it's, it's, it's told as an Ethiopian overall story. It was Tigray and the surrounding regions. Um, but once the, 19, uh, the, the regime was overthrown in 1991, there was absolutely nothing in Tigray. There was no education or anything. But just with hope, a lot was possible to accomplish. And like what we are asking today, donations were playing an important role. And I want to say here, one school, I want to mention a school that played a very significant role in the Tigrayan education system. That school was called Kalamino. It is one school, but it was an inspiration in Tigray for all students across Tigray. This is his story. Uh, a Tigrayan who was in the United States decided, we need to, we need to inculcate the value of education in Tigray and for that, he established a special high school. And that school accepts the best students from Tigray and allows them to study for four years without worrying about anything else, simply focus on education. And that was supported by donations, uh, of, uh, by donations by Tigrayans across the globe and friends of Tigray like yourselves. But it wasn't the school that is a big story here. It is the inspirational role it played in the Tigrayan mind, in the Tigrayan child. Every Tigrayan student wanted to join that school 
And in wanting to join that school, competition, a healthy competition was started across Tigray. And that helped Tigrayan students to excel. They aspire to be a good student, to study. And that is, I think, the most important thing. It is not the school itself, but it's inspirational value for millions of students that played that role. That was very significant. And that was run by donation money. I happened also to study in that school. I was lucky. I started school very late in my life, but that school uh, gave me the opportunity to continue school. Without that, I wouldn't have uh, gone. And so I also know what that means for me personally. But that's, that's not where I want to focus. I want to focus the role it played, even for the students that didn't join that, that school. So with that, I asked the students to tell me what Kalamino represented to them at that time, what it meant for them. And these are some of the uh, responses. Um, one said, one said this. I started school uh, right after the start of the, uh, the overthrow of the regime. I and the teachers used to tell us that education was the key to personal success and to develop uh, our Tigray. We were trained and Tigray was waiting for us. In the middle of this, Kalamino came to life and it drove our love for education even more to a higher level. Competition among friends and classmates are drama dramatically, uh, uh, drastically increased. I didn't make it to Kalamino, but I think it ex its existence by itself contributed a lot, a lot to my uh, success in education. So he didn't join, but it played an important role in inspiring him. Um, one uh, also said here, Kalamino was simply a dream of every Tigrayan student at that time. During my, here a third one says, during my elementary school, Kalamino was just a gate for wisdom and a place where quality education is provided. Students, Students talked a lot about it, and his name was special. His name is Nuwai. He said this. Um, here, Yosef said, I heard probably when I was in grade two, when people used to talk a lot about how beautiful and friendly Kalamino is for excellent students. Some of my elementary teachers were also encouraging me to excel in order to join Kalamino. That made, uh, that made me want to join Kalamino. Others also went, want wanted to join, and that indeed increased uh, our performance at school. It goes on and on. There are about 28 students uh, that have uh, written a detailed story what Kalamino meant for them at that time. But I won't bore you with all the details. I just want to, to emphasize that whatever small help, it looks very small here, could have a very important role in inspiring students, in creating hope, in instilling hope. And I think we can do that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Gibra Christos. And with that message of hope, this night ends. But not before I thank all musicians, <coughs> Samira Veldai, Jacob Yemane, Semir Abraham, Peter Prommel, daar ben je, Tatjana Rosa, Nora Fischer, Shishane Franks, Hessel Mousselaar, Oene van Geel, Matthijs van der Woerd, um, but also behind the scenes, uh, the video boys, Hans van Eck en Jolt Zedarnecki, André Lorenzo, and uh, also here from Spenda, Hans van Vliet, en Paul, Martin en natuurlijk onze eigen Anna Koperdraad en Mario José Grotehuis. Thank you very much for being here. Very much for watching our mission. Thank you.